The calm has it. nodes. The calm has nodes. It's the calm that has nodes. So the calm right. has the nodes. The calm has all the nodes. Okay. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the calm that has the nodes. Grasses. One really important thing about grasses is you've got to know what a gra what's a grass and what isn't. Um, so <coughs> you can find something that's green and it's got um, you know leaves with parallel veins. Um, is it a grass? Something else here, leaves with parallel veins. Is that a grass? Because they could be other things like rushes or sedges, couldn't they? Okay. Does anybody know what this is? Sedge. It's a sedge because sedges have edges. They do. Will you do the sedge dance later? <laughs> I don't, I want Actually, you to teach. don't remember it. I think there's probably oh, about a... a thousand people coming up from four o'clock for okay. extreme botany. <laughs> I want you to teach them all the sedge dance. So sedges have edges, um, and that means if you look at you rub dance. this between thumb and forefinger, it rolls, but it goes plonk, plonk, plonk. David Bellamy taught that. Taught me that um, because it's got a triangular section. They just have edges, and the leaves are ranked in three. So look down there, one, two, three ranks. This one rolls, it's round in section, and the leaves are ranked in twos. So it's a grass. Okay, so that's good. So we can forget the sedge, um, and we can focus on the grass. Um, let's have a bit in So much here and it will be mown eventually at the end, end of the year. So this is one of those grasses that has what kind of inflorescence? Somebody who hasn't studied with me. What kind of inflorescence is this? Is it a panicle? Yeah, because all grasses have panicles. But it's a spike-like panicle. And it's lovely and soft, isn't it? This inflorescence. So what we've got here, I, I suppose we ought to do some basic grass anatomy because um, we need to know certain things. So let's start at the bottom and work up. Okay, so right at the bottom we have a dead bit. You may not, Moth hasn't got any because this has got there, but you have that dead bit. Stick that on the bottom, pretend it was there. So that is the remains of a previous leaf. Um, let's go up to the, has everyone got a living leaf on there? Yeah. Okay, so what we've got is like a little right angle. Not all grasses have that right angle, but all grasses have this thing here, and this is called the leaf blade. Here, okay, this is the leaf blade. Uh, it goes along, it hits the stem here. So sedges have edges, sedges have edges, rushes around, and grasses have nodes actually all the way to the ground. Is one of the ways that goes. So this is this is called a node here. This little knobble, they're like a knee. Um, and actually, look at that. Have you got a knobble? You got one. Just grab, grab another one. Go on. Everyone got a knobble. And that's called a node, and that really distinguishes the grasses from the rushes and sedges. Rushes and sedges, uh, rushes and sedges don't have nodes, but grasses do. Um, and if we follow up from the knobble, from the node, then what we've got there uh, is a sheath. That's leaf sheath, and this is the leaf blade. If we pull, don't pull this away on yours. I'll do it. So actually, all of this is leaf, okay? But only part of it sticks out, and part of it's wrapped around the stem, and that bit wrapped around is called a sheath, um, and this, which is a good word for it, and this is the blade, the leaf blade, okay? Um, so when you're using a key, and I do encourage you to try and use the keys, the Vegetative Key by John Poland and Eric Clement's really good. Um, there's a lovely book by Francis Rose on grasses, sedges and rushes with lots of nice pictures. Um, so there are some good books to help you with grasses and, and other so-called difficult plants. Um, now at the junction of the leaf blade and the sheath there is something exciting. Now, if you haven't got a hand lens, I've got one to lend you. I'm sorry it's got something rude written on it. Sorry about that, but it's given to me by my nephew. So if anyone would like to look at that, no, I don't know. I'll be the old, the OF. Um, 
So what do we see? Oh, that's cute. We see an exciting projection. We see a little something sticking out at that mm -hmm. junction. Can you see that? Yeah. See it with the naked really eye, can't you? That's called a ligule. A ligule. Um, uh, it's it's, pull, it, pull the leaf away. Can you see that sticking up? So you've got leaf blade. I, I, I should be practicing. How can I practice this? How can we do it? Um, I haven't thought enough about this. Um, so yeah, okay. So here is the sheath. Okay. This is the sheath coming up there. My leg is like a sheath. This is the leaf blade. It looks a bit kind of Germanic, that doesn't it? Um, and then this is the ligament. And then it carries up, my head carries up. So that's the ligule. That's really important um, uh, because the ligule can be long, short, it can be actually a fringe of hairs. Yeah? So you, will, you need to know about the ligule. And I'm just telling you now, not that we'll, I don't know how many ligules we'll see um, today, but, but that's a really important discriminatory character. So we've got a sheath, we've got a leaf blade, we've got a ligule. Then we carry on up. Now, this stalk here that goes to the inflorescence is called. A culm, C U L M, C U L M. Don't worry too much about all these words, but they kind of are useful to learn if you really seriously want to get into grass. Does the culm ever have nodes, or the nodes? The culm has or? nodes. The culm has nodes. It's the culm that has nodes. So the culm right. has the nodes. Right. The culm has all the nodes. Okay. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the culm that has the nodes. Right. So the whole thing is the culm. All exactly. the way inside. Exactly. It starts right. from there, okay. and there's a sheath around it. I want to do this with kids because kids would make models of these and they'd be awesome, wouldn't they? They would they'd be able to make a model of the, the, that whole thing. They'd be able to make models of the inflorescences as well. I won't make you do that because you're not kids, but I'd love to. <laughs> no, far from. <laughs> um, botanists are kids, I think they have to be because it's so exciting. Um, right, so, Carl, then we've got the inflorescence, and that's the glory because when you've got the inflorescence, it is a lot easier to identify grasses. Otherwise, you're just looking at green leaves and ligules and a few other things, which you can do. It works. You can identify a grass probably from a single leaf in the UK because we don't have, we have a few hundred species, but it's not like masses and masses and masses. But that's advanced. When you've got an inflorescence, let's use it. So we know here we've got a spike-like inflorescence. We've got little things sticking up, haven't we? Mm, we have various things that stick out of grass, uh, grass inflorescences. Um, and they are, some of them are the sexual parts. So if you look carefully, you might see some feathery things, which are white. Mm -hmm. Those are the stigmas, the female bit. You might see some floppy things dangling down. Oh, fi let's find one, can we? Yes, here. Look at that. See all those floppy things? <coughs> They're kind of dangling, yeah? <coughs> and they'll drop off. Okay? So those are the male bits. Those are the anthers. They produce the pollen. That's going to run out, and I won't have done anything interesting. Um, so that's important, but we, they're not very helpful in identification in grasses on the whole, those bits. So if you've got those on your grass, rub those off. What is really useful is these other sticky up things. And if you try a little bit breezy if you try so try to get a single flower in your hand each of you a single flower <laughs> say it's valentine's day and you want to take your beloved a flower a single flower because that's really quite classy isn't it single flower in the bar don't do it with grasses um yeah well see how i can Most of you don't know. I'll introduce you. My students will know how to answer that. That's, that's it anyway. That is the grass flower. Let me hold it now. One single it's tiny. Thing. See? Really tiny. And if we had loads of time, I'd tell you all about those bits and pieces because they're useful. But what is important, can you see there? There's a little hair sticking on. Okay? It's on the end. That's, that's actually a really significant point because that hair is on the end of a scale which is a modified, uh, it's, it's a modified petal actually, because the, uh, although they're, you know, so it's actually like the buttercup petal but it doesn't look a bit like it because grasses have evolved to really reduce the flowers to almost nothing, a couple of scales, and that is called an awn, an A-W-N, an awn. Anyway, this is meadow foxtail grass, Alipicurus pretensis if you want the Latin name, 
Um, so that um, that awn, the soft, really soft, that's really nice. Isn't it? We don't need teddy bears when we've got this because it's really cuddly <laughs> and soft. But what's really useful here for this whole foxtail genus is this bit. It's a little bit podgy here. It's a little bit swollen, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is a, the sheath is swollen. Right. Okay, we'll look at other grasses and we won't see that. Here's another grass. This is the one I was looking for inside. You see, there's no swollen sheath there. Leaf blade, not swollen. So this, med this foxtail group, they all have this slightly swollen, inflated sheath, actually, is the better way, because it's actually air in there. So that's meadow foxtail, Alopecurus pretensis. Um, let's try another one. So this is that's meadow foxtail. So it's, it's very abundant here, and it's a good indicator of, of old, quite a, so old meadows. So actually, this beautiful area here is beautiful, and it's probably the remnants of old meadows which were. Um, around the big houses that used to be here before the university bought it. Um, and probably the university buying this has helped protect, in some ways it's helped protect, of course there has been development, but it's helped protect these, these old meadows. So this, this meadow foxtail is a nice thing to have here. Plenty of other indicators of old meadows here as well. Um, this next grass is the one with the... What kind of inflorescence is this? <laughs> it's, it's a panicle, but it's a branch panicle, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you keep, keep getting ones with nothing. I'll come back. I haven't been very efficient with this. Why don't you... Okay, now, I've taught you so much about gardening. Why don't you all go and get this one? I'll just show you. Get, get me a good specimen that has all those bits and pieces. So good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, covered in green fly. Okay, so here we have a different kind of grass, really, really common. Uh, and this grass can actually occur in meadows, but in lots of other places as well. And we may actually have more than one species between us here. We shall see. So we got a branch panicle. So let's see how well you've been doing. What's the ligule like? Long, short. Yeah. Yeah. I bet all of you, if you've got reasonable so I can see that ligule. Yeah. Really long. Some of them are not that long. You don't mind me saying so yours isn't very long. You've got a baby one too. So uh, that's okay. We seem to have some long, some short. Let's see whether that's important. Um, now look at your leaf blade. <laughs> Not too dead one. <coughs> you need a not too dead leaf to look at this. And what I want you to do, here's here's a good example, so you can see quite a long ligule. <coughs> now, leaf blade. If you've got a really good leaf blade, and I think yours is fine, you should see a groove down the middle. Yeah. It's actually, if you look with the lens, it's two grooves. It's like two little lines down the middle. We call those tram lines. Okay. Um, because if the leaf blade was much bigger, we could probably run a, run a tram down them. Now, if you run that, tr if you're a little, see a little... Okay, well, we'll assume it's a really tiny tram, and it's going down the leaf blade, and it gets to the end of the leaf blade. What does it find there? I think it finds a little, yeah, a little boat shape. Yes. Um, so it's not 
flat at the end. It's actually the, the leaf blade comes together like that, and it's almost like a canoe, yeah. a sort of old style canoe. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. That's a good example if you're not happy with that. See what I mean? Yeah. That's called a boat shaped tip, and the combination of tram lines and boat shaped tip tells us it's a meadow grass. Very likely to be a meadow grass, which is power. And if you know my famous song, uh, which is about the Poaceae, the Poaceae is the family of grasses, and Poa is the, is the sort of type, we call the type genus of the Poaceae, the meadow grasses. So we've all, if you've all got tram lines and boat shaped tips, you've all got a meadow grass. Um, all the meadow grasses have a branched panicle. <coughs> have we got orns? This is high level learning. Orns, ligules, sheaves. Have we got orns? No, don't be tentative, that's fine. I don't care if you're wrong. No. There aren't really orns, um, and that's fine. Meadow grasses don't have orns, so that's helpful. Or well, it could be, it's not that helpful at the moment, because this is obviously very different to the last one we looked at, but there are plenty of grasses that look like this. Some of them have orns, they're going to be something else, not a meadow grass. So meadow grasses have uh, tram lines, boat shaped tip, spikelets, and this is actually called a spikelet, I didn't clarify. Um, and the spikelet is the finest division. So I suppose if I'm going to spend just a little bit more time here, I should ask you each to put a spikelet in your hand, but I won't. I'll do it and then show you. Now, you put, remember you put a flower, a single flower in your hand, or you tried to for the meadow foxtail. That actually was a spike, because meadow foxtail has one flower in each spike. All the spikelets are curved. Um, this is a spike, okay, and it actually has, you'll have to take my word for it because we don't have time to go in depth here, that's more than one flower. Yeah, there's more than one overlapping scale. And that's where the, the sexual bits can be quite useful, because if you've got the anthers, the male bits, or the stigmas, the female bits, you'll see that there's several different ones sticking out of one spike. So when you do the kids' game, which I would do if I was doing this for children, where you actually get them to pull the grass apart, um, it's when you get to the smallest division, so you can start with that, they pull that one off. It's less cruel than pulling the feet off, or the legs off spiders, I think. So you do that, and then you pull off another one, and eventually you can't pull anymore because you'd be really tearing the thing apart. So that would be a spike leg. That's really important, because some grasses have one flower per spike leg and the meadow grass has more than one. Um, now, the last thing we want to do before we have a little stroll through the meadow and see what else we can find is attack the sheath carefully. Okay, so we take our plant, our... We know it's a meadow grass, we don't yet know which one. And the way to find out is to do this. So make sure you've got a leaf blade because then you know the rest all the way down here to the node is the sheath. And I want to know if that's rough or smooth. And the only way you can really tell is you've got very sensitive fingers, which means you don't do enough work, um, is to put the, the grass to your either your lips or just above where it's nice and sensitive. And can you feel roughness or not? You got it. One way, you said it'll be one way because actually what you've got is tiny little hair sticking up in one direction. Mine isn't, mine's smooth. Oh yeah. Rough. If it's rough, it's rough stalked meadow grass, how a trivialis. And you should have a long ligule. Maybe If it's smooth, it's smooth stalked meadow grass and the ligule should be shorter. And I hope so, like, I hope that fits. Mine is smooth and the ligule's a bit shorter. I think we probably have both here and that would work. That's okay, so I'll use your hand. Okay. Okay. I'll use you. I won't ridicule you, but I'll use you as a, a lesson in a minute. Are you getting that? Yeah. Alright, I believe it was different in size. Which one's smooth? Yeah. So that makes it a bit shorter. 
They're rather similar and they're variable and yeah, we need the rest of the day to do a proper survey. But that's basically what you're looking for, the new meadow grass. So we've seen meadow foxtail with its very condensed spike-like inflorescence and we've seen meadow grasses. And if you remember, <coughs> usually with plants, I don't know what it's like with animals, but usually with plants you need more than one character, more than one thing to look at to be sure. And we've given several here. Tramline, speck-shaped tip, ligule, long or short, and the roughness of the sheep, and the ab no ornaments. So all of those things together tell you with some confidence that you've got at least a meadow grass, a power, and then you can work out what's good. Now may I have this one, and then we're going to take a little stroll just to finish our time, just so you can find things, and we'll just do names. Anyway. This is, so you are, Nicholas was looking at this, seeing that it had a rough sheep. Um, is this a meadow grass? Now I can see... How am I? Really nice. I can see... So this is actually quite... It's not a meadow grass. But this is quite salutary, just to remember. And a nice ligule. But I don't think that inflorescence looks like yours. What we've got here is big chunky bits and then long stalks. So this is Cox's grass, but it's pretending to be a meadow grass because it does have tram lines and a bit of a boat shaped tip. Um, so, you know, I like to think grasses are not as difficult as people make out, but they can be a bit tricky. Okay. <coughs> but, does it have horns? Oh, this is where we can go. Wait, 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 don't say anything yet. Can do, we do have the drum roll. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's got horns, but they're not very long. And I, I need to convince you. No good news, that's the horn. So, okay. Supposed to be the expert, you've got a website and letters after your name. Yeah, they're, they're not very long. So let's see where they are. So you've got to twiddle the thing around. So if you've got the, um, if you've got the bit of grass in your hand, if you twiddle it around like that, you can see it from different angles, and it may just look to you as though it's a pointy end to this scaly thing, but it's actually a little tiny hair, and I would say it's several millimetres long. Do you want to check the next, just to be sure? If you can't see them, you can't see them, but I think it's quite clear. Um, yeah. Much thicker than these. Yeah. Thick. And you could be, you could think it's just the point, you know, that actually what you've got is this scale. It's actually called a, uh, it's called a lemma. Don't worry about that. Not a lemon, a lemma. You could be thinking it's just really finely pointed, but it actually is a little. Can you see it? That makes well. <laughs> well, well, in in advanced poesy, I'll, I'll show. So what I think we should do now, because we don't have masses of time left, um, I think we should just take a walk through this lovely meadow and just see what you find. Um, let's see what we find and let's just do a few names at the end and then we'll be, we'll be done. An hour is no time, an hour is not long enough, but hopefully it's long enough for you to either think, no, never want to look at grass again, or, hmm, that's quite interesting. I might look at some more grasses. So let's take a walk down this path.